Hi everybody, hope you're well. We've just come back from a lovely weekend away up in the Cotswolds and I thought I'd share with you our experiences of that break. Now I filmed some of it, I didn't film all of it, uh, hence the reason why I'm going to be sat here narrating my way through what we got up to over the weekend. So grab yourself a cup of tea, settle down and I'll tell you about our weekend away at Cotswold View. So as I already mentioned, we spent our weekend away at Cotswold View Caravan Park, which is just south of Chipping Norton, just north of Woodstock on the A44. Very easy access indeed. So we set off here just after two o'clock on Friday afternoon, just after Angela finished her work. We made our way through uh, the motorway, the A roads around Swindon and around Oxford. We did hit some traffic on the A34, but we made it there on site within an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, total mileage was just over 50 miles for us, so it's absolutely fine. Now, when you arrive on site, there is a number plate recognition system, which means you don't need to talk to anybody unless you need to settle up the remainder of your bill, which means you can pull up to the barrier, the barrier raises up and you carry on straight through. On the day of arrival, you get an email listing out all the things about what pitch number you're staying on. They attach a map and they attach all the important information in that email. Why am I mentioning this to you? Well, somebody didn't read the map and somebody didn't pay any attention to the uh, instructions or the emails that came through uh, for reasons that will become very apparent later on. But when we arrived, I made a bit of a mistake. So when we arrived, we went down there, which was the wrong way. We should have gone down here. And um, we went all around the site, but we should have just turned straight down here, down to our pitch. So by the time I'd finished doing the loop around the campsite, it was time for me to make a very tight left turn down towards our pitch. Now, as you can see here, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but trust me, when you've got an audience of people watching you and also you're a little bit stressed because you haven't read the instructions, completely my fault, uh, it was a little bit challenging, but I did manage to get around there. I'm pretty sure if I had a bigger or a longer caravan, I would have been a little bit more sweary about things but nonetheless we did make it down and we ended up on our pitch it just a few moments later i reversed straight on leveled up and we were done by four o'clock so the lesson here is read the instructions read the map make sure you're aware of where you're going and it was all completely my fault but believe me this theme of me not paying attention will become more apparent a bit later on in the video so like I said, we pitched up really quickly and uh, by four o'clock we were sat outside drinking cups of tea, taking in perhaps the last of the nice weather for the weekend ahead because the weather report was predicting that we were going to have some fairly significant showers. But anyway, we were going to make most of it and sit outside and take in all the fresh air. Now Friday night we didn't really feel like cooking. We both had a fairly long and exhausting week and uh, we just took advantage of the on-site facilities. Now on the site there is a lovely little restaurant called The Old Shed. They provide um, breakfast, brunch and lunches etc. They don't do any evening meals but on the Friday evening they do provide takeaway pizzas and that's exactly what we did. We took a wander over, Angela ordered her vegetarian, I ordered the meat feast to overcompensate for Angela's lack of meat. And so we took the pizzas back to the caravan, sat outside eating our food and we took in some lovely sunsets that evening. In fact, I took a picture, have a look at this. What a beautiful sight it was. Now, as nice as the pizzas were and as lovely as the sunset was, it wasn't the reason why we'd actually turned up for this particular weekend. Um, we are here for this weekend because this site is doing a, uh, an event and it's the film on the farm. They've got a very large outdoor cinema just over the uh, tree line there and we've booked ourselves some tickets for one of the uh, shows tonight and we're going to go watch Top Gun. But today we're going to go and explore the area. We're going to go to Chipping Norton later on because we've never been. I probably have, but I can't remember it. So we're going to go to Chipping Norton and explore the area. But before all of that, obviously we need to sort out some breakfast and we are not having breakfast in the caravan today. Instead, <clears throat> it's been suggested to me on Instagram already that we head on over to the Old Shed, which is an on-site uh, cafe, restaurant, eatery place, um, that we'd go and have one of their breakfasts. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Right, let's go. Now, I didn't film inside the old shed. I didn't feel it was really appropriate. It was very busy and there was lots of people around there. So you don't really want somebody waving a camera around everywhere. I did, however, take a photo of our breakfast, which you can see here. And I think you'll agree that's pretty monumental. What you can't see, however, is the cups of coffee, the orange juices and the two rounds of toast, which also accompanied those breakfasts. 
Needless to say, Angela and I were absolutely stuffed and we didn't eat anything else until that evening. So once breakfast was done, we decided to waddle back to the caravan. I say waddle because we were both absolutely stuffed. But on the way back to the caravan, I did film some of the different accommodation types and give you a general feel of how the campsite is laid out. So this is on our way down to our pitch. And over here, you've got all these pods, which is great if you want to come along to a holiday and people don't have a caravan or you've got too many people in your party. We're swimming around this way. Lots of pitches, caravans, camper vans. There's a lot of camper vans here, I've noticed. Yeah. Uh, motorhomes as well. Hardcore campers and the tents. More pods down there, and I think there's a dog walk down. Yeah, that's right. There's a dog walk area down there as well, which is nice. We can swing around here. Apart from the blinking wind. Sorry. I think I've put on two stones since eating that breakfast. I don't think I've ever had so much pork in all my life. And don't say anything rude. I'm not. Right, let's get ready to go out. So this campsite is probably the first campsite I've ever been to where there is no one-way system. And there's no five mile per hour notice. I noticed that last night. Mm-hmm. It was quite, well, it was like a chicane. It was like maggots and beckets, this uh, sweeping curve here. <laughs> um, yeah, they did hoon it through here at a feral rate of knots, which was quite disturbing really, especially when they've had children out playing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm the bigger man in more ways than one after that breakfast. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go at a genteel speed. Right, so we are in the uh, long stay parking of Chip Norton. It's free, which is great for us because we don't need to pay a penny. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, well, there you are. Yeah, we're gonna go on in and enjoy our day. I'll be honest with you, we didn't really stay that long in Chipping Norton. We took in some of the independent shops. We had a quick walk around, but again, it's that trade off of filming things and, you know, enjoying yourself. So I didn't actually film too much of it. What I did film, however, was the wonderful sweet shop at the end of the high street where Angela bought some um, pick and mix, uh, a sweet cake. It's literally a cake that looks like a sweet. It was quite incredible. Um, and a few bits of old fudge as well. We, we purchased those. We also dived into a couple of florist shops, uh, gift shops, etc. Um, I will say there isn't a lot in Chipping Norton, but if you do need any essentials, there is a Sainsbury's and there's a co-op there. So if you do need anything, Chipping Norton is just six or seven miles up the road from the campsite. So it's ideal for picking up uh, any essentials. But here's my on the spot review of Chipping Norton as we're walking back to the car. If you want a haircut from a Turkish barber, if you want a first edition from 1863, yeah. sweets, um, terraniums, plants. plants, Chipping Norton is the place for you. And lots of takeaways. And lots of takeaways. Lots and lots of takeaways. Um, that's basically it. That's what's here. It's a nice place to walk around. Mm. Um, we're now going to find somewhere to grab ourselves a cup of coffee, I think. Okay. You up for that? Yeah. Actually, maybe a cup of tea. Uh, what do you think of this site so far? It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a really nice vibe ambience to it, hasn't it? Yeah. And um, it's like a. It feels very continental. Yeah. It's lovely, actually. In fact, there's a lot of um, people from Europe here, actually. Our neighbours are from Netherlands. Last night, they were from Austria. Uh, they were from Leicester. So, mm -hmm. quite a lot of foreigners around here. <laughs> 
Now because of the proximity of our pitch to the outdoor cinema, literally it being just over the tree line, we could hear absolutely everything. Which was great joy for Angela and myself because we both found ourselves singing along to Matilda on Saturday afternoon. So our late afternoon and early evening in the caravan was spent catching up on some much needed TV, but did leave me a little bit speechless. We've just finished watching um, Hijack. Hijack on Apple TV. That was absolutely insane. I absolutely, enjoyed, I love that to bits. <laughs> we did it over a course of a couple of nights, couple of days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we really, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what a show. There's got to be season two because there's a couple of loose ends there that haven't been cleared up. Yeah. Anyway, um, I've made a discovery about our pitch. And it's only because the motorhome that turned up next door to us, um, a new arrival today, um, they put their hose pipe out and they connected up to a tap behind their pitch. Well, I've only just realised... We're on a service pitch. We're on a service to pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and my service pitch kit is in the office at home in the corner ready to <laughs> start so there's me filling up our aqua roll yesterday over there uh -huh. and uh, we've got a tap on our pitch what a plum anyway it is now um, 20 to 6 we are 20 minutes away from eating dinner we're having pork chop Coal on the cob, slad, yeah. and uh, then we're going to eat that, get ourselves ready, and then we're going to go over to watch more aircraft-related bonfoonery. Like I say, movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not looking this angle very much, are you? Well, it's okay, I suppose. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do this evening, and we'll take you along with us. Obviously, I won't be able to show you the movie because I'll be hit with a copyright strike, but I can show you the outdoor cinema whilst we're setting up. So we'll take our two chairs, the table. The problem I've got there is that there is a potential for rain tonight. So we need mm -hmm. to take a brolly with us as well. Because it's 40% chance of rain, isn't it? Yes. And the showers have been amazing here so far. Anyway, so that's that. Mm -hmm. Right, better carry on and have a look and see. I know what the angle's doing, it's making your head look big. Are you calling me a big head? Well, bigger than usual. <laughs> that's a bloody weird angle, isn't it? <laughs> And there we go, Chinese style pork chop, corn on the cob, bago salad. Well, no, it's a, not bago salad, it's a boxo salad, right? Yes. Boxo salad, there will be flavoured water in a moment. And then we might finish off with a goo pot. Oh yeah, slobbing it tonight. So once the washing up was done, we decided to head on over. We took our chairs, the table, the brollies, the blankets, the drinks, and some of the sweets that Angela had purchased earlier in the day, and we trudged our way over to the outdoor cinema. The setup of the cinema was incredible. They had some food stands and some drink stands behind us. So if you wanted things like popcorn, nachos, hot dogs, all of that was available for you. But on the drink side, you could get yourself a couple of beers, a cider, and even a jug of Pims. They were also available. It was an absolutely fantastic environment. We settled ourselves down, got ourselves settled in a really great position right in front of the screen. And it was then that we met Carrie, Richard, and Abby, followers of our channels who also own a Ridgeway 640, just like ourselves. So we had a great chat, comparing notes, laughing and joking, etc. So it was lovely to catch up with you guys. And I hope that we cross paths again in the near future. So with the sun starting to set over the horizon, that iconic introduction music to Top Gun started off and it was a fantastic evening. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I've never done an outdoor cinema in a big group like that before. And this was absolutely fantastic. One of the highlights for me was at the end of the film when everybody started to clap. Now, obviously, for very obvious reasons, I can't show you any of that because we'll be hit with a copyright strike. But I did catch the audience at the end of the film and show you exactly how it was all laid out. And this was at the end of the film when Tom Cruise is flying around in his beloved P-51D. It was a great experience and it's one that I highly recommend that you do. The $64 billion question though is, did we miss the rain? And thankfully we did. Even though the weather forecast said that there was 50% chance of us getting showers, we did miss the rain right up to the point when we were walking back to the caravan. Literally just a few yards away from the caravan and it started to rain. So we were able to throw the chairs into the car, get inside before the rain really came down for the rest of the night. 
So on Sunday morning, we got ourselves up. It was a lazy start to the day. It was a really lazy day, to be honest with you, but we headed off by 12 o'clock. We'd had showers, we'd had breakfast, and we got back home by 2.30. So I've put a link to Cotswold View down in the description below. I'll be honest with you, we want to go back because we don't think we did the place justice. We were only there for a weekend, but we've both decided that we want to go back for longer next year. Explore more of the area, explore more of the, um, the site, and also give you an idea of what else is available there as well. So that will be coming up next year, I expect. When? I don't know, but we'll plan something in our diaries and we're going to head on back. So there we go. I hope you've loved this video. Now we are going away again in next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend, and we're going to be heading off to Tewkesbury. Again, it's a place that we've been to, but we haven't actually camped at Tewkesbury Abbey. So we're going to be heading there in a couple of weeks. And again, I'm going to try and film some of that for you so you can see how we get on. So that will be coming up in a couple of weeks, no doubt. But that's it from us today. Many thanks for watching, everybody. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon if you can do all that. Well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.